Listen, a lot of people have been talking about my girl Miss Webb, and I'm here to address the rumors. It's terrible, but it's so much fun. If you haven't seen, a little movie called Madam Webb was released this month, and the reaction has been so entertaining. I would argue that this movie has transcended the screen and has now become a collective public experience. People are watching it on their PS3s. There was a Twitch channel called Madam Web 247 that had been playing the movie over and over again, non-stop, that was running for days before it was finally taken down. The chat on that was very interesting. Unfortunately, it is gone now, but never forgotten, of course. It's clearly getting the Morbius treatment though. I missed out on a lot of the context for that meme, mainly because I didn't watch the movie because Jared Leto kind of scares me. Hello. So unfortunately, I couldn't even sit through that movie, ironically. But I feel like this is really my chance to get that experience, and it does feel quite personally curated. Like, I'm sorry, Dakota Johnson is starring in a superhero movie that's getting panned to shit? Yeah, I'm gonna go watch that. My first introduction to Madame Webb, though, was through that infamous teaser trailer. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. And Ross farted in front of AMP, but Phantom and Duke Dennis didn't let it slide. Unfortunately, my optimism for this movie was not infectious, at all. On opening night, theaters were seeing advanced sales declining in real time. I, on the other hand, was having a ball. They clearly told Dakota Johnson to ham it up for the press tour, and honestly, I think the results are lovely. I have always really loved Marvel movies. I mean, what percent of Marvel movies have you seen? Four. I know that when you see Madam Web, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. Oh, hold on. <laughs> what do you mean by that? And I did see it twice. This really is Madame Web. <laughs> My absolute favorite feature of the Madame Web promotions though, which allow me to get niche here, was the ocean spray bottle package design in China that unveiled her super suit that she wears for exactly four seconds at the end of the movie. I'm not really clear on why they settled on an ocean spray bottle. I guess maybe because cranberry juice is also red, like Madame. But the surf going on here just feels a little bit serious for juice though, no? Why am I the only one serving cunt on the ocean spray bottle? I feel like I'm being gaslit by her gaze too. Like, are you looking at me or not? If you want to get Checked out like a true madame though, China really is the place to go. You get a madame tote and a drink holder for your madame juice. Want to know what I got in Canada when I went to see Madame Web? A look of disappointment from the person scanning my ticket. Like I'm sorry, exactly what are my other options here? Argyle? Wonka? I get into my seat though, and I open myself up to the world of Madame Web. Before we get into it though, I want to give a quick shout out to today's video partner, NordVPN. Listen, the internet is a scary place these days. You can't even use public Wi-Fi in peace. You have to start worrying about man in the middle attacks where bad actors are able to use public Wi-Fi networks to spy on you and harvest your information, all while you're under the impression that you're just harmlessly using a cafe's Wi-Fi to stream a certain song you like without using your data. It's sick and twisted, but it is preventable. With Nord, you can come safer online with just one click at nordvpn.com slash with threat protection, Nord keeps you safe from malware, trackers, and ads. And Nord even informs you about any vulnerabilities in the apps you use, or if your credentials have been leaked through their dark web monitor. Your traffic is always protected through encryption, and they don't track or share what you do online. They're also the fastest VPN on the planet, and you can actually take one account and protect up to six different devices with it. You could protect all of One Direction with that thing. And me. Let's throw me in there. I'm also a really big fan of them because I'm Canadian, which means that I can't access any Hulu content. It's all region locked, except for when I use Nord to pretend that I'm in America. It's super handy, and it's not limited to Canada or the States. You can use them to access any type of region locked content worldwide. They've also got 24 seven customer support and a 30 day money back guarantee so that you can test it out, see if you like it risk-free. And if you want to check it out, you can use my link nordvpn.com slash to get a two year plan with Nord and an extra four months free on top as an exclusive bonus. That's nordvpn.com slash if you're interested. You can check out my description box below if you're interested, the rest of the details will be down there. But otherwise, thanks again to NordVPN and let's get back into the video. The movie starts in 1973 in the Peruvian Amazon. We're watching her mom on screen, she's in the forest, she's looking at a spider web, she's studying in the Amazon. To which I was sitting in my seat thinking, yes, she's gonna say the line already. The line is not in the goddamn movie at all. I watched it twice just in case I missed it. Instead, we get the weirdest cut to a pregnancy cramp I have ever seen in my life. These little spiders have the potential to cure hundreds of diseases it could pop. I wasn't even mad about the missing Amazon line anymore. Because if you're doing this kind of editing in the first five minutes of your movie, I know this thing's about to be a lot of fun. So after this cramp, she perseveres and she's looking around and she finally finds the spider that she was looking for. And the security guard that she was with suddenly pulls out a gun and shoots everybody around her and is like, listen, give me the spider. He starts playing tug of war with a pregnant woman over a jar with a spider in it and obviously he wins. And he just scurries off while she's laying on the floor in the middle of the forest surrounded by dead 
dead people. And I'm sitting in the theater thinking to myself at this point, how is Dakota Johnson's mom gonna get out of this? Random people start scurrying down the trees with a finesse I've only ever seen by the Cullen family. One of them scoops up Grandma Webb and starts carrying her through the trees like Bella. God knows where they end up, but we're in this cave where there's a pool and they're giving the mom a bath and she gets bit by a spider. She dies. Dakota Johnson is born. It's like very Padme. I lost my will to live. Now we're in 2003 in New York and Dakota Johnson's character, whose name is Cassie, is a paramedic. One might even say a paramedem. Also, Adam Scott is her coworker. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. I think it was like Paul or something. Now Cassie's supposed to be a detached, jaded woman who doesn't want to connect with anybody because she has mommy issues. And the way this movie decides to deliver this information to the audience is just so interesting. They have this child hand her a drawing of his family after Cassie had just saved his mom. And she looks at the drawing and goes, what am I supposed to do with this? We both hate family stuff. Like, girl, he's right there. Just take the fucking picture. They go back to the ambulance though, and they're eating Chinese food, and she ends up opening a fortune cookie. And Cassie's fortune cookie says, you will blank with nothing there. It's very ominous. What's she gonna do? Mommy issues are not though. She is a paramedem and she has things to do. So she gets called in for an emergency where this guy is like tipping in a car about to fall off of a bridge. So her and Adam help this guy out of the car and Cassie's still in the car when the door magically shuts and the car tips over into the ocean. Or maybe it was a lake or a river, which at this point, the worst possible thing crosses my mind. This woman is fighting for her life in an underwater car and I'm sitting there giggling because I'm thinking about the big bald boy from Colleen Hoover. Without context, it already looks bad, but with context? Girl, she's drowning, why are you laughing? Sorry, it's just reminding me of this book that I read where this kid had like gigantic balls for some reason. Don't ever say that woman didn't have impact, okay? I'm not saying it's good impact, but it's impact. Cassie's in the water though, but suddenly she's outside of the car and she's like kind of like starfishing right now. And she starts to see all of these different webs in the water. And listen, I'm gonna be honest, I did not enjoy the web imagery in this movie. It felt a bit spermy to me, okay? She sees a bunch of different symbols though that end up alluding to things that happen later in the movie. It's really hard to describe what goes on at this point because the editing is... <laughs> Honestly, just a lot. When she wakes up though, she's already out of the water and Adam Scott was doing CPR. When he's checking her O2 levels though, the whole sequence starts from the top again and she realizes that she's reliving it. It's very Life is Strange-esque. And she's kind of annoyed because it's weird, but mainly because she wants to go home and watch Idol, let the records show that Madame Webb is a confirmed Katie cat. We are a dying breed. We need to be accounted for. We go back to the villain guy at this point and we still don't really understand why he stole the spider other than that he had a hard life growing up. And you might be sitting there thinking, of course, they're going to keep it a bit vague at the beginning of the movie. I'm sure they're going to explain everything later. But no, no, they don't. As we're watching him go about his day, we realize that he's rich though now, which don't understand how he's rich. I feel like it probably has something to do with the spider, but they never make that connection. But this guy's problem is that he keeps having the same nightmare involving three girls. Every time he sees this dream, they kick his ass, push him out of a building and kill him and then steal his spider. And this man is so stressed about it. It's not a dream. I'm gonna be murdered one day. You go into this movie expecting Dakota Johnson to be the funny part, which don't get me wrong, she definitely delivers. Her lines very similar to those Taylor Swift deepfake Le Creuset videos. Hey y'all, it's Taylor Swift here. Due to a packaging error, we can't sell 3000 Le Creuset cookware sets. So I'm giving them away to my loyal fans for free. But this man comes out of nowhere with a voice that I can only describe as a mashup between Corpse and the guys from the 365 Days trilogy. And it's atrocious. The whole movie, this guy just keeps going. Those teams. Teenagers will have powers. He's truly the goofiest villain I've seen in a minute. Because he's so paranoid about it though, he ends up seducing this techie lady who has access to this facial recognition technology. And he ends up poisoning her so he can get access to it and then figure out who those girls are so he can kill them before they can get to him. We go back to Cassie though, and she's attending a baby shower for Adam Scott's sister-in-law, who happens to be played by Emma Roberts. Girl, what are you doing here? The shower went okay, but all the paramedics end up getting called out of the shower for an emergency. So of course, Cassie She's gotta go. She's doing CPR, she's in her moment, she's saving lives. And in the middle of all this, she has one of those visions where she sees into the future, but then is brought back a few minutes later so that she can have an opportunity to change things. What she learns in that vision is that one of her friends, O'Neill, is gonna get in a car crash and die. So when the scene starts from the top again, she runs over to O'Neill and is like, listen, let me drive. To which O'Neill is like, no, 
I don't think I will. Immediately after this man gets in the car and Dakota Johnson turns around, a car comes out of nowhere and T-bones him. I cannot stress enough the family guy ass pacing of this scene. It was perfect. And as the audience, you're just sitting there thinking, oh my god, I can't believe we lost O'Neal. I love that guy. I have such good memories of him. Like 10 seconds ago when he was flipping burgers at the baby shower and five seconds ago when we told him not to get in that car. The deep sadness I carried from losing O'Neal though was very quickly moved on from when I realized that the sidekick of the villain is fucking Shosh from Girls. Redcoat is back on though. Madame Web is on a freaking mission. And it turns out that the three girls that that villain keeps seeing in his nightmares are also at the train station. And we find out that their names are Julia, Maddie, and Anya. So Dakota's on the same train as all of them and she has a vision that the villain comes out of nowhere and starts rocking all of their shit. When the sequence restarts, she goes to all the girls and is like, you have to get off this train, like we gotta go. Of course set in the style of Dakota Johnson. So it was more like, you have to get off this train. We need to go. She finally gets them all off this train though. And they're like, why are you doing this? Like, who are you? And she looks at them and says, you want to know what your emergency is? And the camera pans to a dude in full Spidey spandex, climbing the f***ing ceiling toward them a la Spider Granny from Legion. Which as I'm describing it, it sounds very high paced and scary. But when you're watching it, you realize that he's crawling with this very awkwardly slow pace and he's kind of getting a little sassy with it. Of course, they're all spooked though, so they end up running onto a different train. There was also this interaction that happened on both trains where this one guy would go to Dakota Johnson and be like, am I on the right train? And she'd be like, I don't know. And then he'd leave. And then on the new train, he's like, hey, am I on the right train? Like. What is the point of this? Spidey guy is chasing them down though. Like this is where it starts to get a bit scary. They get off the train and they see all of these different cops, but then he pulls up and he just starts beating the shit out of all of them so they don't know what to do. They do manage to escape though and they steal a cab. Cassie's trying to calm everybody down. So she's like, you know what? I'll ask what their names are. What are your names? What are your names? After they're all introduced to each other though, they start to listen to the radio and they realize the cops aren't looking for the Spidey guy. They're actually looking for Madame Webb. I still don't get how this mix up happened because the Spidey guy was not sly about beating the shit out of those cops and the cops would have seen him. And there was no moment in this movie where it seemed like he could be invisible. So I don't really understand how that works, but they're officially on the run now. So they end up parking the taxi in a random forest. This is where they all start to get to know each other a little bit better. And Julia realizes that she's actually met Madame Webb before. It turns out that Cassie was the paramedic that verbatim saved my stepmom and was super awkward about it. Then the other two girls realize that they've also met Cassie. Maddie had flipped her off while she was crossing the street once and Anya lives in the same building as her. Isn't it just so pretty to think all along there was some invisible web. So Cassie's standing there thinking, wow, the plot's really starting to thicken here. I need a second to think. And by second, I mean, she turns to the girls and goes, all right, you guys stay here. I'll be back in three hours. Before she leaves though, Cassie makes sure to bestow some true wisdom onto her new friends. Don't do anything dumb. Seriously, don't do dumb things. While the girls are chilling in the forest, Cassie goes back to her house to go through her mom's stuff, including this notebook that's full of drawings of like big spider webs and spiders. Like this is intense ass spider research. And after rifling through a bunch of different pages, she finally settles on one and she looks at it and goes, ah yes, here's the chapter on spider people. They possess powers derived from spider venom and are incredibly fast, incredibly strong. Your skin is pale white and ice cold. Your eyes change color and sometimes you speak like like you're from a different time. After she finds a chapter on spider people, she also finds this photo of her mom and a guy, and she recognizes him as the villain. Meanwhile, the other girls are still in the forest, so obviously they're like, okay, we need to go somewhere else. So they end up going to a diner. So they get to this diner, they have some food, they notice that there's a table of guys, and one of the girls is like, you know what? We should go over there and talk to them. And when Cassie finally comes back and finds them, they're all on the table dancing. And that's when the evil guy shows up and starts rocking everybody's shit while Toxic plays in the background. It turns out this is another vision into the future though. So Cassie gets to restart. So we're back to the girls dancing on the table, having a good time. But this time around, instead of Cassie just pulling up earlier, she decides she's going to crash the car at the same time that the evil guy is walking in so she can just run him over. So they manage to escape, but what they don't know is that Shosh just found out Cassie's identity. And the villain guy at first is like not taking on any of this information. He's like, I don't care about that old lady. I just care about these teenagers. But then Shosh says her full name and this man stops dead in his tracks and goes, did you just say Webb? Yes, she did. 
And that's Madam Web to you, bitch. Mind you, they never call her Madam in this movie once. Not even a miss. The girls end up at this motel though, and as Cassie goes to sleep, she ends up re-entering the diner in her dreams. And she's talking to a like, vision or a force ghost thing that happens to be the villain guy. They don't explain how it works at all, but the villain guy and Madam Web are finally talking to each other. She's obviously trying to figure out why he's being the way that he is, and he's not being helpful at all. A really funny recurring moment in this movie though is that there's three different characters that when the villain is talking about these teenagers go, listen man, like, I get it, but like, they're teenagers. And his response is always, but they're teenagers who will have powers. Like, what the fuck does that change about it? When she finally wakes up though, she's like, okay, She's getting kind of serious right now. So she decides that the thing that she needs to do is teach all three girls CPR. So there's this long ass scene of her teaching them CPR and you can tell by the music in the background that they're like, look at how much they're bonding over giving CPR to a pillow. They're basically sisters now. And after what's supposed to be a tender moment that really brings them all together in a way that they weren't before, Cassie looks at them all and goes, all right, I gotta go to Peru real quick and fucking leaves them. Don't worry though, guys, she'll be quick. She's flying Air Taylor. So now we're in Peru, in the middle of a forest, Cassie's all by herself, and this man comes out of nowhere and is like, hey, I was waiting for you to come. She ends up following this man though to get some more answers and we learn some more spider lore. Apparently the guy who stole the spider has been cursed ever since he took it. And as this random man is explaining this to us, he takes Cassie into this cave with a pool in it and is like, hey, do you trust me? She's like, not really. This man proceeds to push her spirit into the pool, if this makes sense. Just close your eyes and walk with me here. So her spirit is in this pool of water and that whole web thing happens again. And she starts to see a vision where it's a slideshow of different clips of her mother while she was in the Amazon. On the fucking struggle bus, by the way, like this lady was going through it. And upon seeing this, Dakota's immediately like, why did you hate me so much? And then a sequence plays that explains why her mother went to Peru in the first place, where it turns out that the spider was gonna be a cure for a muscular disorder that Cassie was supposed to have when she was born. But I don't have a cure. But then everything's okay because she hugs her mom in the vision and she's surrounded by her webs again and she knows exactly what she's gonna do. After she's had her epiphany and she's out of the pool, the guy comes up to her and is like, listen, I feel like you should know this, but once you master your power, you can be in more than one place at one time. And then the man leaves her in the cave, alone, in the middle of the Amazon. We then go back to the evil guy who is once again arguing with Shosh. We need to find them. I can't find them. But we need to find them. I still can't find them. Back in New York, the girls have been hiding out at Adam Scott's house because they can't be seen by any CCTV, but Emma Roberts goes into labor, so they all have to go to the hospital. Unfortunately, on my second watch of this, I realized that they kept using the same stock moaning noise over and over again in the car. Emma Roberts said, I am not moaning in a booth. You can go to Epidemic Sound, all right? While they're driving to the hospital though, one of the CCTV cameras ends up spotting one of the girls in the car window, so Shosh lets the villain know. Somehow Cassie is already back from Peru and she pulls up to Adam Scott's house, realizes it's empty, and she has a vision and sees everybody blowing up. So she's like, damn, I gotta get to business. And then she steals an ambulance. So the villain is chasing down Adam Scott's car, which currently has Adam Scott, pregnant Emma Roberts, and the three girls. And Cassie's driving an ambulance trying to catch up to them. Right when the villain is about to bomb this car, Cassie drives her ambulance through a billboard and hits him through the air. It isn't enough to kill him though. So they gotta like regroup really quick, get in the ambulance and drive away. But Spider Guy is chasing them down. Cassie, watch out, he's right behind you. Drive Cassie, drive. Cassie and the three girls end up at the shipping yard and Cassie takes out all these different flares that she found in the ambulance and is like, all right, we gotta stick these flares into all of these different crates and we're gonna like slow him down. It was very dramatic. Like they were all running, the fireworks are going off and the building is starting to explode. Then they're up on the roof and she's like shielding the girls with a piece of sheet metal. It's really hard to describe because the editing for the action scenes in general in this movie, but especially at this part are so disorienting. Like it really is something you have to see with your own eyes because I was sitting there in the theater after the sequence ended and was like, I don't even know which way is up. At this point, the evil guy is kind of kicking their asses a bit. All of the girls are separated. And isn't that an interesting detail? They're all dangling above this burning building and the evil guy looks to Cassie and is like, you can't save all three. And I'm not joking. Cassie stands there and shoots a web out of her chest and like grabs them all with her web. So how her like web technology or magic, I don't know, works is that each web is like a version of her. So there's technically a ghost version of Cassie in front of all three girls right now. And for two of them, she saves them. Mind you, the evil guy is just standing there watching her do all of this. But for one of the girls, she just goes up to her and is like, 
you're gonna be okay. And that's it. He's approaching her at this point and is giving his whole like, you lost speech. But what makes this scene so good is that whoever was editing it decided that for the big line that Dakota has, they were gonna do an office style zoom in. I'm not even kidding. This is exactly how the editing goes for this. The girls were never your future. I was. Whoever was in charge of editing this, I love you. He ends up falling to the ground after this, and then the giant P from the Pepsi sign also falls and crushes him. So he's dead, which is great. But Cassie also falls, but instead of on the ground, she's like in the water, and Julia ends up diving in after to save her. And you are not going to believe what happens next. The three girls then proceed to perform CPR. Things are looking up though. The evil is defeated. We're back to Emma Roberts in the hospital. She's had her baby, but Cassie's also in the hospital and she has a bandage around her eyes. The girls are tighter than ever though. Cassie's like, I have everything I need right here. We do eventually end up back at her apartment. She's in a wheelchair now and she has these like cool ass sunglasses. Where the hell did this window come from? This is like the kind of window you see in a wise old ass wizard's tower. This was not here at the beginning of the movie. I like to think that she got it installed after she found her newfound clairvoyance but who knows. She's chatting with the girls though and she's like, I can see better than I ever have. And it turns into this montage of the three girls in their super suits with powers beating everybody's ass. And Cassie's narrating over it with a really inspiring speech. I felt worthless. I felt ugly. I felt gay. I felt that no, uh, that, like that. And the end of this movie is just Dakota Johnson zooming back over to her window with her wheelchair. Now here's the thing. This was not a good movie, but I also had a lot of fun. And I honestly would recommend seeing this with a bunch of friends on a cheap Tuesday. Like Dakota Johnson is being Dakota Johnson. The villain is obscenely goofy and he's complaining about these teenagers with powers who don't even have the powers yet. We don't see any of that. So you're pretty much just watching a pack of girls running around for two hours. But again, I did have fun. The editing is crazy in this thing. I'm curious to know what you guys thought though, if you've seen it. But otherwise, if you guys liked the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. But otherwise I'll see you in the next one.